so I was switched. <laughs> Uh, so I was saying that it's a pleasure for me to be here with all of you, and it has been a pleasure to work with you during this project. And uh, after everything that was said already by Professor Goretti, uh, it could be uh, clearly seen that uh, uh, there was a very effective work and that this project showed that uh, this kind of model, of participative model in terms of learning is an effective model. And also it showed that uh, if there, are, there is commitment and if there is a, a spirit of partnership, difficulties can be overcome. Uh, so this was seen on the resilience uh, that this project has showed uh, when it was confronted with the pandemic, because uh, as we know, one of the uh, milestones, the more important milestones of the project was exactly uh, the meeting of all the trios in Ravensburg to have uh, uh, in loco some experiences with the other colleagues of the other countries. And this exactly uh, was not possible because the pandemic began exactly in the moment in which it was planned to go to Ravensburg. And in spite of that, and this was one year ago, what we can see is that uh, there was enough resilience to keep the project on track with changes, but uh, results were achieved. So, uh, as it was uh, um, already said, I think it's uh, PPLL had the role in the partnership of making the evaluation of the project. And uh, since we have seen already everything that was done and we have seen also in, the, in this movie that we could see in this um, short video that uh, one key element was the learning trios uh, in which we had the students with the tutors of the company and the tutors of the um, higher education organizations. Um, so we decided to bring here uh, on the evaluation exactly the result, because we think that this is the most important now. And uh, what uh, we can see here is that uh, when we began the project, we said that uh, uh, our expectations on a short term basis um, for our results were to have qualification of students with higher employability, uh, employability potential, to make an upskilling effect through this collaborative learning process, to establish a closer relationship between companies and academy, to establish these learning trios that we said already that were the key. And in the end, uh, if this was resulting, then we would have margin to make a memorandum of cooperation that will uh, result in future actions together. Let's see from this uh, how this worked and specially focused on the pilot test because all the activities before the pilot test were leading to this pilot test that it was the practice of the bottle. And what we can see in relation to the qualification of students and the higher employability potential was that the company's tutors, um, they have stated that the students uh, that were in this system, that they revealed uh, some more awareness in relation to what is the work challenges and uh, they have also showed an increasing capability to adapt and to overcome problems. What is not usual in early beginners, it means in students that finish their studies and enter the labor market. So these students were more prepared to face that. 
On the other side, they said that they also understood much better how a company works and how is the world of a company. So uh, this model has helped the students to have a large intuitive knowledge of what happens inside one company, what helps them uh, to have a better performance. When we go to the upskilling effect through this collaborative learning process, uh, all the learning trios have considered that uh, the students' soft skills were improved through this method of learning. And uh, uh, several soft skills were really developed. And uh, for instance, from uh, our surveys that we did uh, of the evaluation, uh, some that were mentioned uh, as uh, very important were the conceptual and creative soft skills. And um, well, I will not uh, read all this, but uh, this uh, and the leadership soft skills as well as interpersonal soft skills. So meaning that when we speak about this sector that is tourism, of course that uh, uh, and today in the morning in the webinar, we heard uh, to hear that these creative soft skills are more important than ever because it's necessary to rethink all the tourism model uh, after this uh, incredible crisis and this pandemic situation. And leadership and interpersonal uh, soft skills are naturally uh, one of the key uh, success factors of uh, good uh, tourism professionals. So, uh, still in this uh, upskilling effect, the students themselves, they found that they learned much more doing this duality a company um, a academy than uh, if they would be only in their classes. And uh, on the other side, they found very challenging that they had the opportunity to bring to their uh, company where they were working exactly what they have learned uh, in the classes and they could apply this uh, in the practice. Uh, when they were working in the company. On the other side, from the academy tutors, um, what uh, they has, have said was that uh, the students understand that the theoretical background that they get in the uh, school is important, but uh, this is accompanied by a real or perspective of the work environment. Then uh, another achievement, uh, another achievement that we have was in relation to uh, what was uh, also one of our targets, a closer cooperation between the academy and the companies. And uh, what we could see is that uh, the overall cooperation is really improved and every uh, organization and the, the colleagues that were involved in this project, they all stated, and even in all the workshops that we had, that for sure this model have improved uh, the, the cooperation and they were satisfied in a way that measures were already taken to ensure the continuity of this cooperation. So in different ways, because of course, realities and contexts are different and uh, there is uh, a, not the possibility of one fits all, this is not possible, but of course that with the adaptations to each context, each one of the participants uh, was taking the right measures to ensure continuity. During the pilot, so when they were asked during the pilot um, about these achievements of collaboration, 
they, the company tutors said clearly, and uh, this is really remarkable because they are the people that are in the companies and that very often we hear to say that uh, they have no patience and they have no time for the students. So, the, because this is not their, uh, their main target. But uh, in reality, uh, what they have stated was that uh, the, all this collaboration and that to have the students there was an added value so for, for the system of learning. And more than that, they, they said that uh, the, the, let's say the professors of the, the academy, the tutors of the academy, they also said that uh, the feedback that they were getting from the tutors of the companies was really important to be incorporated in what they were doing in the classes. And so adapting um, and uh, tailoring these learnings and the, the, the subjects more to the real needs of the companies. So uh, then what was also achieved was the learning trials were set up and we had in the project uh, 48 learning trials. Of course, that we can see that we have different numbers of tutors, uh, either in the company or um, in the academy, because of course we had more students and some of the tutors were tutors of more than one student. But anyway, each student had to have one learning trio so, uh, around him. So we had 48 learning trios because we had 48 students. Well, the memorandum of cooperation will be signed tomorrow, I think, tomorrow afternoon uh, in the end of the conference. Then, <clears throat> in terms of the long-term uh, effects of uh, this project, um, we, um, we wanted to achieve with this new collaborative learning process a decrease in the mismatch between what they learn and what companies need and to increase the competitiveness of the sector by providing better services by better professionals uh, with the higher employability of the students um, and a development of a joint tourism qualification among the partners. Uh, and then the European Forum for Dual Education that we saw already in the video that is being created. In relation to this joint tourism qualification, uh, this was not possible and we can understand why, because of course that this pandemic has affected the development uh, that was uh, aimed. But uh, anyway, I would say that from our perspective, the basis is there. Because, as we said, uh, all the tutors and the students were satisfied with the system. So the system proved to be effective and to be better than only a, a monolithic uh, system in which there is learning only in one place. And for that reason, now that the partners are already taking measures to ensure the continuity, it will be easier to think about a new project in which this joint qualification can be the core thematic of that project. And this would be one recommendation from us. It would be to think about one project with this joint tourism qualification, even because we know that the, Euro the European Commission is always uh, fostering and promoting the idea of having qualifications that are recognized in different countries because this is improving mobility inside Europe that is one of the four freedoms uh, of, of Europe. So um, in this uh, decrease of the skills uh, mismatch um, we already heard that the company tutor said clearly that uh, uh, the development of these skills were according to the needs of the company, so they felt that. 
and the, in relation to the employability. And this is really a very interesting point because they said that this is a good support for the recruitment uh, of the students, meaning that uh, the company tutor said that since the, these students are exposed to the work environment and they see them performing, this leads to an assessment of their competences on, in local and of course uh, and lead, can lead to future employment of these students. Well, having said that, that uh, we could see that was mainly positive. Um, we had also some challenges that were discovered and that need some attention to be overcome in this continuation. Uh, the first one is the administrative barriers of the universities. And uh, as you know, because it's not easy to change curricula inside the universities. And so um, there is the need of uh, being a little bit more flexible in order to adapt the curricula really according to what is better. Um, and on the other side, this is also related with a better conciliation in relation to the times that students are in the companies and are in the, the school. So this should be also seen in order that uh, achievements are there, but uh, on the other side, they can really uh, have a closer cooperation with both um, important actors in their learning uh, process. So um, this is exactly these difficulties to conciliate this schedule. They had uh, this difficulty. Then uh, in some cases, we heard about the work of a load of the tutors, either from the company, either from the university, uh, because exactly the system, we could see uh, several times in Ravensburg that because the system is structured in a different way, there is not this problem. But uh, in our case, because most of the time the tutors were doing this additionally to what they were already doing, because the system was not changed still, then this resulted in a, 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 a overload. So again, I come to the barriers uh, that are important to be removed in order that the system itself uh, and this collaboration system can be incorporated in a better way uh, to avoid this overload. The, then, of course, the late start of the pilot, but uh, this uh, we could not avoid since uh, some uh, uh, the seasonality of the tourism sector, of course, uh, has some implications. One of them is that vacation periods of companies uh, also have uh, had an impact on this start of the pilot. And on the other side, the, it had an impact in the time that the students were in the company, that in some cases were in the off season. And of course, this is not the same reality when they are in the high school. And of course that, well, the COVID pandemic and about that I will not say anything else. Um, so what we recommend really is um, uh, from what uh, we could uh, evaluate, we think that increase the number of the hours spent in companies uh, with a better conciliation between school and company can result in a better process. Um, then another uh, issue that came out, and again, because the system was not uh, uh, structured in this way, was that students had expenses with uh, uh, transport to go. Maria, Maria uh, João, sorry. Yes. Could you please try to 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 stick our schedule? We are wasting time. This is my last slide. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maurice Juan. Thank you, Sophie. No problem. So this is uh, it's necessary also to think about this. And another thing that they said is that uh, uh, it is important to give detailed information 
uh, to the students about the company before they go there. And also to take into account uh, the dimension of the company, because of course that those that are in bigger companies, they have more possibilities of circulating uh, in different areas than those that are in very small companies. But most of all, what we heard from everybody was that they wish very much the continuation of the project. So uh, these uh, are only two main conclusions uh, that uh, this uh, added value is uh, undeniable, yeah, so of this system, and that the basis for a future dual model is really established. So this is what we had to say about uh, our evaluation of the project.